BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Tuesday, March 22nd. Wherever and however you're connected, always great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the man who at his core embodies fun at work, Jerem Jordan. At my core, more like my gut, more like my belly that I'm getting as I get older. Let's go. You're enjoying life. Sign of, uh, you know, a good time. Uh, Harris Lachance always likes to have fun. In fact, he said this yesterday at Spring Ball. It's fun. Really fun. (laughs) We're getting better, man. Good Spring Ball. Harris Lachance uh, did that entire interview with his mouthpiece in. He's a lunch pail guy, Jerem. His hard hat and his lunch pail, he I've, comes to work. I've never seen a lunch pail or hard hat on him. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. He clocks in. Yeah, I like Harris a lot. Uh, Harris is a guy that, um, if he doesn't start, he's like an amazing backup. We'll see. I think he's he's one of many fantastic linemen. He had an ankle injury that set him back. He only played in like three or four games last year. But uh, he's been he's been a guy that's been super in the mix the last couple of years. Right tackle. Um, so that gave Campbell Barrington a bunch of runs. So those two guys have a ton of experience. So let's go, man. Uh, if I had a mouthpiece that wasn't that other crappy one that we used. You've a while done ago. that. You have real appreciation for that because you struggled through a segment with a huge mouthpiece. Well, his, his did what's called fit him. Um, <laughs> unlike the one we got. <laughs> which was like, that might've been Brad Waldo's backup mouthpiece that was unused or something. I don't know. Nice pull with the Brad Waldo. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Here's your show lineup. We promise we won't do this with mouthpieces in. Yeah, no guarantees. Can the NIT run impact next season for BYU basketball in a positive way? Because when you look at it, how different will the roster be? Who's even coming back after A.B. and T. John leave? Mark Durant, BYU basketball radio analyst and former Cougar, will join us to discuss that and the matchup with Washington State. Plus, is Taysom Hill's status in New Orleans changing once again where does he fit into the Saints scheme with their new head coach? And will he go somewhere else? Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Spring football practice continues. Defense back Micah Harper is coming off an injury after a good 2020 campaign as a freshman. And he likes the move to safety. Our, our corners are really solid right now. Our safeties, we lost some safeties. And I think that it was a better fit for me in a sense of the way how I play. I'm a, uh, I can, I'm, Quick enough to guard the slot. I'm physical enough to guard the tight end, and I like to tackle, so I think it's a perfect position for me. I'm excited for him to be back. He's a good player, man. Stay tuned for Dave McCann's conversation with Puka Nakua after practice yesterday. There's a man that knows his role. Very, very detailed about the move back to safety. I like that. I don't like the fact that BYU softball dropped a rare game to the Pac-12 and the 11th-ranked Oregon Ducks in Pro Bowl by a final of 9-3. to BYU scored three runs in the bottom of the fifth to tie it up, and then the wheels kind of came off. They gave up four in the sixth, two more in the seventh, and they ultimately lose nine to three. Huge series coming up for the Cougars, so not much time to dwell on that because Iowa State, a Big 12 preview, begins a three-game series with BYU and Provo beating this Friday at doubleheader starting at 6 Eastern, 4 Mountain, live on the BYU TV app. Floyd Temples wins WCC Pitcher of the Week after an 8K complete game shutout versus Southern Utah last week and a save versus Idaho State. Congratulations to Chloe, dynamite pitcher. BYU baseball plays all of about, I don't know, five minutes away. The University Parkway collision at Utah Valley University tonight. 42nd meeting all time between these two locally uh, rivaled schools, if we want to call it a rivalry. BYU leads the series 32-9. to They've won the last 11 meetings. 8 Eastern live on BYU Radio. I'm not, I don't categorize it as a rivalry. I, just because you're close doesn't mean it's a rivalry. Uh, you know, BYU and Westminster, no. Uh, although UVU, I know we've played more. Heather Nighting and Aaron Livingston made the U.S. Women's Collegiate National Team. You always one of eight schools with multiple players on the 38-person team. Training camp is in June with head coach Rob Browning, who's a former BYU men's volleyball assistant coach. He's been with the St. Mary's Women's Program for a long time. So pretty cool stuff for Heather and Aaron. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending.
You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending, presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. BYU basketball on the cusp of another trip to New York City and the NIT New York Final City. Four. Yes, New York City. If BYU beats Washington State tomorrow night, the Cougars, for the third time in nine years, will make the trip to New York City and the NIT Final Four. Hey, that's typically making the most of what is not the best situation if you miss the NCAA tournament. The question today is, does the current BYU basketball postseason run in the NIT have any impact on next season and that positive momentum potentially going into the next season? I don't think so. I think it's mostly about the this year. Well, let's look back at those, uh, you know, two other two other times. So in 2013, BYU goes to the semifinals of the NIT. Mm-hmm. The next year, goes to the NCAA tournament, loses to Oregon. Kyle Collinsworth blows out his knee yeah. in the WCC title yes. game. You lose by lose. 19 in Milwaukee. Was that that one? Okay. 2016, BYU goes to the semifinals of the NIT. Mm-hmm. The next year. Mm-hmm. NIT one and done. Uh, I don't think there's a lot or very much or, frankly, any connection to success the next year. I do, I do, however, want to break it down more than just the – like if BYU goes to semifinals next year, it does not mean they'll make the NCAA tournament next year. In fact, I would say it's going to be a challenge next year to equal how good this team was because you have to replace Alex Barcelo and Tijan Lucas. So what are we expecting? For BYU to have a better player than Alex Barcelo next year at at guard? I would think that would be a challenge to equal that. Hashtag transfer portal? Yes, of course. Uh, But it took AB three years to get to this point, right? A year or two. Um, So it's hard to be like, hey, someone come in and be as good as this guy. It's tough. Uh, Alex is a tremendous guard. Um, you got to replace the the backcourt. Although if you're the current guards, you're going, hey, we're right here. Uh, but BYU does need a point guard. I think BYU needs a center. Um, Atiki Ali Atiki is on the cusp of being like good starter, but he still needs some reps. I think you bring in an experienced center. Atiki's still the backup, and then you have two quality fives at that point. Obviously, Foose and Loner at the four are really nice options. If a team's a little smaller, you can run Foose at the five. You can run Caleb at the five. Although maybe an offseason will help Caleb in that regard, but it was a challenge for Caleb to be – a four or a five, depending on the night, and be asked to do a lot as a sophomore. Next year, when he's a junior, it's like, okay, now you really got to be, uh, you know, like a 12 and six guy consistently. And he's knocking down some threes in the postseason. That's great. So there, there's a lot of work to be done. I, I don't believe there's a correlation between any run here and super success next year. I do, I do, however, think it's good for some development for some of these guards. It's good for them to see the ball go through the net consistently, to feel that. And then you get some confidence going into the offseason. But BYU doesn't play any meaningful games for eight months. Like, that can quickly kind of go away, and then you have to recapture it next year. The biggest impact for BYU in this scenario is on an individual basis. The team core and chemistry is going to be so different after losing Alex Barcelo yeah. and T. John Lucas that it's yeah. hard to say, well, that NIT run was special, and it's going to launch us and propel us <laughs> into next season because you lose – the two most dynamic pieces of your current roster. So by nature, it's just hard to say, yeah, the team's going to take this positive vibe and they're going to come back stronger and better than ever because you automatically lose your best player. However, I do like the idea of a guy like Fusini Traore and Caleb Lohner, Trevin Nell, Spencer Johnson. I wish Seneca Knight were playing. He's injured, so he can't play. But I like Anatiki Aliatiki. I like... The opportunity for those guys to play some really tough games against, you know, pretty good teams. Against Not NCAA Santa, tournament against teams. Against Santa Clara Plus. But good teams. Yeah. If BYU plays Texas A&M or Wake Forest, I mean, the Washington State's a good team. They're a lot like San Francisco. Yeah. This is a good challenge for these guys on an individual basis. So I do think that the best impact potentially – and a positive one will be for the guys that I just mentioned. And we have seen Caleb kind of come back into the player we thought he was going to be more of this year over the last few games in the NIT specifically. So I like this for Caleb Lohner. He's a guy that could take some positive momentum. Yeah. Knowing that, hey, I played my last seven games at a pretty high level. Like, I know I'm capable. Reestablish that confidence. Yeah. And then more development for Atiki and for Foose. Um, and then the wing guards, you know. 
we'll see how their role develops. How many more shots are those guys going to want to take and take and make next year with Alex Barcelo and T. John Lucas vacating a lot of available yes. shots? You got to get a point guard in here from the transfer portal, one that averages double figures. Yeah. You got to have that. So to this me, is... you also have to have a center because you're like, okay, Dallin Hall and Tanner Toulson and Richie Saunders, you can't be like, hey, all of you have to ball out right now. If I'm Trevin Nell and Spencer Johnson, I go, get in line. Freshman, <laughs> like we're juniors and seniors getting George. Like I'm a fifth year senior next year. Um, get in line. Dallin Hall is going to be a, an amazing player for BYU in the next couple of years. We'll see how quickly they ask him to do something significant. I think what next year he comes off the bench um, because Trevin and Spencer and Gideon are going, hey, well, I'm right here. The best, I wish Seneca Knight was healthy too, but the best thing for these guys' development is that someone's hurt so they get a little more PT. I don't like injuries, but was Foos isn't Foos without. Richard Harward and Gavin B- Baxter being hurt. Sure, That's he's accelerated. Re- that, yes, it was accelerated. So hopefully that pays dividends when Bioy's in the Big 12 and Foose is ready as a junior to go up against, uh, you know, top five competition every third week. Because that's what it's going to be. That's the reality. Yes, and if Houston continues on their trek, like, they're going to stay in the top ten. There absolutely is developmental value in these games. Sure, it's like a bowl game. So I don't want like, BYU fans to think, well... I mean, the team's going to be totally turned over next year. There's some truth to it, that. It will be turned over at point guard. Sure. And at shooting guard, maybe. No, because you bring back Trevin and uh, Spencer and Gideon and Seneca. Like the two and three. You bring back four dudes. And you bring in three RM. Sorry. Yeah. Speaking of specifically when T. John and Alex are on the floor yeah. together. The, the one and the two. The point guard. Okay. Yeah. The one and the two, both gone. It, but there is developmental value in these types of games. So BYU yeah, no, fans should no be question. excited about these opportunities and especially the late round opportunities in the NIT, because these are the types of teams that BYU will need to beat next year. And these players will need to have confidence against next year to build a resume to get back to the NCAA tournament. It, so like, yes and no, it's, it's fun to see the individual development. It doesn't correlate to team success per se though. Like, do we feel like, listen, all the backups that played against UAB in the bowl game, that's going to help BYU get out to a quick start this football season. I don't necessarily feel that way. I just feel like it was a one. You wouldn't think it's going to hurt, though. Like, if any, like, development is sure. development, right? Sure, but am I like, dude, JaVel Brown got 20 snaps. No, but so we're, fo- means... we're talking about, a fo- you're comparing apples and oranges. A football team is way bigger, way more personnel involved than just a 15-man basketball roster. So well, I would say no, individual development no, is. No, the idea of they played in a game late in the season that didn't super matter towards how that season's going to be thought of, right? UAB, whatever. The NIT, like, if they go to New York, hey, cool. Um, But the first two rounds, like, all right, whatever. Like, awesome. But it doesn't necessarily correlate to, you know what BYU basketball is going to be next year? This, because of that. Sure, and I said that. No, we don't know what the team will be. Yeah. But we can hope that Caleb Lohner reestablishes his confidence and sure. a couple of these other individual we guys. We always hope. We don't need uh, anything. Get it's better hope. against yeah. good competition, too. Again, this is this is pretty high-level competition. They're going to be going against some really good individual plus. players. Yeah. Well, Santa Clara beat BYU this year. So Yeah, Santa Clara plus. BYU's playing that's teams. That's a bonus. BYU's playing teams as good as it is, which is just outside. If not a little the, better. The turn. If not a little better. I don't think BYU's played a team that's better than it yet. I think if BYU plays... Um, BYU's better than Washington State. Yeah, BYU plays Wake or Texas A&M or Xavier. Yeah, those are teams. That By are how good. much, though? Because they're at home. They're a three-point favorite. So what we've learned is that essentially on a neutral court, they're saying these teams are even. Yeah. And Washington State's healthier than they have been all season. I'm looking at Ken Palm. I'm looking at Ned. I'm looking at, yeah, BYU's a better team than Washington State. It's not by much, but they are a better Our team. question of the day, do you believe the NIT experience will have any impact on next season for BYU basketball. No. You've heard our opinions? <laughs> Let's hear from you, BYUSN, in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At UT Perkins on Instagram answers, yes, more playing time and confidence for all of the underclassmen. Actually, probably a much better experience than being one and done in the big dance. Well, there is that opinion, too. The people that, a few people that feel strongly that, hey, more games are better for a team like this than just getting to the big dance and losing. Well, of course, yes. But that's like saying, would you rather be in a New Year's Six and lose or play UAB in the Independence Bowl and win? But BYU like lost. Like, if you won. 
It's like, no, I want the bigger, tougher thing. I because I'm not I'm not in it for the experience of the guys. I'm in it for wins for BYU. I'm in it for status. I'm in it for the dance. Okay, that's to, to me what matters most, of course, on the court, on the court. Hopefully winning this reaps some matters. dividends. Hopefully this reaps some more winning dividends with the individual development. That's what we're hoping for. Yes. And I think it can be that. When we lose all the other stuff. Make the best of what and, you have in front of you. And we clear it out. It's like, well, hopefully it's better. Hashtag BYUS <laughs> on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Coming up. Puka Nakua on spring ball in the upcoming season. And BYU basketball radio analyst and a basketball alumnus. Mark Durant joins us to discuss that matchup against Wazoo. Just how good are the other Cougars from Pullman? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at TRIO. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TRIOORUM.com. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Andy is new this season. Yeah, she's awesome. Very capable and very big-hearted. It's so amazing to be a part of this. I mean, to travel around the world and learn so much from others while we can participate in their goals in meaningful ways. Yeah, we like to tease her. You know, it's natural, though, being the new girl and all. Yeah, she hit the ground running. Yeah, she did. I hope the show can inspire others to get involved and open their eyes to the people around them. Yeah, she looks small, but she's super tough. Doesn't like snakes, though. Yeah, that's for sure. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tomorrow night, the individual development will be on display as the BYU Cougars take on Washington State for a chance to go to Madison Square Garden in New York City. Pre-game, BYU Radio, 8 Eastern time. This is going to be a battle, dude. That game's going to, I think it's going to be a really good game. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. It's a daily battle in this studio, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just to get to 11. I'm Spencer We're Linton like, alongside talk about? Jerem Jordan. It's time to bring in the referee. <laughs> yeah. Let's... Oh, I was thinking just I'm, what I'm, content. I'm kidding. Yeah, I was like, yeah. No, I'm Everyone's I'm like, what kidding. are you talking about in the summer? I'm like, I don't know. We'll figure it out, and we always do. Mark Durant joining us now to bring us some A-level content and discuss the matchup between BYU and Washington State tomorrow night in the NIT quarterfinals. Mark, oh, you're not at home today. You're, like, in the office. The office. lighting looks amazing right now. You look great. Wow. Hey, it's not easy looking this good. I got a whole staff, makeup, lights. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it takes some more. Yeah, I'm in the office. I uh, I haven't been in the office much in the last two years, but we're just starting to go back, so it's kind of weird, but uh, good to be back in the office. The well, thanks for working us into your work schedule. The views are incredible. Uh, pretty nice there, you know. The only problem is I'm looking right at the University of Utah. With all due respect, <laughs> it's not my favorite view, and uh, so, but you got to take the good with the bad. It's still very pretty. Speaking of BYU's in the NIT. Uh, <laughs> trying to make the best of that situation, right? We've been talking about it. And our question of the day is like, what, what value do you associate with 
this run in the NIT as it pertains to success for next year's team? What do you think? Well, I mean, aside from that, it's just fun to play as a player. I wanted to play games. I mean, I wasn't reason I wasn't very good is because I didn't like to practice very much, but I loved playing games and <laughs> man, playing games in the marriage center uh, and, and having that opportunity. That's, yeah, I just turned 51 this past week, and man, I look back on those days. Those are the halcyon days, man. I was that was fun. I, I I had no idea how great that was when it was happening, uh, but it's just fun <laughs> to play in those games, and so you get an opportunity to play. That's really cool. And then obviously, it's not maybe what you had a goal for at the beginning of the season, but this is what you have now, and it's it's actually a pretty cool opportunity because you're playing really good teams, and if you win, you can go to somewhere really cool and play in a really cool uh, venue and maybe have a chance to have a really special memory with those guys again. So when you're 51 and sitting around, you have that memory of your buddies and yeah, yeah, we did this. That was pretty fun. That was cool. And uh, so it's a really good opportunity. I think it's not the one you shot for, but it's the one you have now and it's a good one. And, uh, and I think, you know, winning games and having success, it's, uh, it's about trajectory. It's about momentum. So I do think there's some value especially with the guys who will be back next year of winning games and winning uh, championship level games. So when you play in those types of games, which you'll play in a lot in the next few years, it's not a new situation. You've been there before you've had success there before and, and maybe won there before and won a title against teams that you'll be competing with in the future. That's, you know, there's value in that. And to the extent the players can play and get better, like you were mentioning with uh, Foos this year, his opportunity to play, he's gotten better. This is another opportunity to play. It's another opportunity to coach against good coaches and good teams. You get better because of this experience. So, but yeah, again, not where you maybe chose to be, but this is where you are, and it's still a good opportunity. Mark Durant, BYU basketball radio analyst with us on BYU Sports Nation. Mark, I'm looking at Caleb Lohner specifically and just what he's done over the past few games, and is there anybody else on the roster that will – benefit or potentially benefit more than Caleb just because of the resurgence that we're seeing in him from one season to the next? Yeah, this has been a valuable time for Caleb and I'm there's no bigger fan of Caleb Lohner than I am. And uh, I'm so happy to just see him having fun playing with confidence, shooting the ball confidently. Uh, He was asked to do a lot this year. Uh, I don't know how much of it was, was that and how much was just, Uh, Sometimes you get in a slump and it's hard to break out of it, but he has such talent and such athletic ability. If you can get him back to where like, I was watching some high school clips of Caleb not long ago, that was a supremely confident kid and he he looked really good in what he was doing. I think he's finding that again. Uh, Obviously the tools are there for him. It's just now of matching his tools with uh, the right situation at BYU so he's he's played great recently. Gideon George, of course, he had that big game the other night. This this is these are valuable games for Gideon. He's going to be heavily relied on in the future. So yeah, it's about those future guys: Boos, Atiki, Caleb, uh, Gideon, Trevin is playing well. Spencer Johnson's playing well. You know, it's important to have those guys playing with confidence going into summer. And so they think, man, we, I was playing really good. And I'm going to play good this summer and next year, look out. That's the attitude I want, especially from Caleb, because I think he has underperformed probably the most. And I say that with love to Caleb, but I just know what he can do. And so if he can get up back up to that level, man, look out for Caleb Lohner. He's got all the, the, the tools that you'd want for an NBA guy and the body for it. A lot, of, a lot of BYU guys over the years have had the skills, but not the body to play in the NBA. Caleb's got the body. And he just needs to shoot about 300 threes a, a day over the summer <laughs> to make sure he's shooting at a high level because that's that's his ticket forward uh, is being able to shoot from distance. 300 a day. How about 300 a morning? That's what I'm putting up right now, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Mark. Uh, Listen, no. Jerem, we don't all have your commitment to getting better. I didn't say how many I mean, were going in. Uh, I just said how many were going up. Um, th- this run uh, certainly is fun for BYU right now to try and, try and get to – New York. Alex Barcelo hasn't been the leading guy in all of this. I joked uh, recently that I think he's saving it for, you know, MSG. 
uh, should be while you get there. Twelve and a half a game over the two. He's uh, you know five of thirteen, went one of eight from three. The, I, I imagine this BYU team will be even better, obviously, with Alex Barcelo. Should he connect at the level we we've been used to, and perhaps they might need it tomorrow night against a good Washington State team. Yeah, I mean, well, it's like you and Spencer, right, Jerem? You know, in in the low pressure situation, Spencer performs pretty well. But oh my the High pressure, you're the superstar. <laughs> oh my you need gosh! To elevate your game. You have to carry in those high pressure situations. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you always have the luxury playing at home against smaller teams that they haven't really needed Alex Barcelo <laughs> to play really, really well, right? I mean, when you're playing at home, it's easier for bench guys to play well easier to get the assists and move the ball and, and do your thing. I hope that continues, but my experience is, and now that they're playing against bitter, bigger teams, better teams, uh, not, and if they win this game, they'll be on the road in a different venue. It's harder to get good performances from the whole group like you have been. I hope that happens again, but my experience in tournament play is that tournaments are for superstars. Superstars need to perform at a high level for you to be successful. So Alex Barcelo uh, will need to be the, the best Alex Barcelo out there, which is really, really good. And I think he can do it. And he'll have to do it for BYU to continue to advance. It's just the way it is. Your best players have to play their best games in the biggest games. And so uh, I think he's got it in him. Uh, I think he's obviously just the nature of his game is is – deferential a little bit to make other players better but at some point here Alex will have to have you know, 25 or 30 points 35 points for BYU to be able to advance because it's just harder to play uh, you know against good teams and and so you need your best players to play their best I should mention he has 12 assists in the two games that's a good number and 10 rebounds sharing the basketball that's what Mark. he does yeah that's what he does I mean if he's missing shots he goes and gets seven assists and five rebounds and three. I mean, he he, he never hurts you ever, and he, even when he's not making the threes as as what well, as to what we expect him to do. Mark, from my uh, low pressure stance here, <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a look at this Washington State roster, and I watched the game that the Cougars from Pullman played against SMU on Sunday. They remind me a lot of San Francisco. They've got a ton of size. They're healthier than they've been all season. Their backcourt's really good and can score the basketball. They're not Shabazz and Bouye from San Francisco, but they're not far off. They're really athletic. So they remind me a lot of San Francisco. Is that bad news for BYU in terms of the matchup? Yes, it's bad news. BYU struggled against uh, teams with bigger talented guys and good guards. So whether it's Gonzaga, obviously, St. Mary's, San Francisco, there's a similar formula there. BYU won't be able to dominate on the offensive boards and second chance points like they have against some of these smaller teams. Uh, Foose tends to struggle a little bit when he does against the big seven foot type centers. Um, and so that's a struggle and it's not going to be wide open threes like you're used to these last couple of games. So it will be a challenge. This will be a tough game, and guys are going to have to step up and really rebound and you know work to, to get open shots. And you're not going to see that really the high assist number like you've seen in the past couple of games. That's not to say I don't think BYU can win. I mean, they're at home. They're a really good team. I'm just saying it's going to be a different game, and it will be a real battle, and we'll test how well this BYU team is playing to play against a team that has this kind of size and athleticism, defensive ability. It's going to be another one of those St. Mary's, San Francisco type games. BYU can certainly win it, but it's going to be a battle. Yeah, Mike Flowers and Tyrell Roberts have both made, uh, you know, or put up 200 plus three. So they, uh, they chuck it from deep. Okay, tomorrow night's crowd will be interesting because the first game there, were, there was 5K there, but they were loud. Then there was 7K on Saturday. The lower bowl is already sold out. I think it's going to be a great crowd, similar to what we saw a couple years ago against Creighton. Uh, that had like we had like 15k in the final game to get to New York. I think it's going to be uh, one of the better home games of the year tomorrow. What do you think? Yeah, Jerem, can I take a minute and just talk about Cougar Nation? I mean, I love it. You guys don't understand this more than anybody. As I go out and travel to games and just out in the community, I, people are so kind to me, and we don't want to talk about Cougar sports, and I love it. And I just 
so value BYU fans. There's not a better fan base in the country, and you you see that firsthand when you travel with this team and the support they get in these different gyms. It's just remarkable. And for them to come out, I mean, this is not your season tickets. You have to make an effort to go buy tickets and go to the game. And so these are really invested fans, and they make, they're very loud. And as it gets bigger and bigger, uh, and as the team gets more excited about the prospects, the fans get more excited. And the, the, the fans really carried BYU through that first game, I think, really helped uh, BYU kind of get over the initial doldrums and get ready to play. And now it's going to just be a great basketball environment against a really good team. You know, the place is going to be pretty full and loud. And I'm just so excited about it. And there's just, I mean, it's so fun. It's such a great environment in the Merritt Center, the band and the cheerleaders. And it's just, I mean, it's, I, if you love college basketball, you've got to love this. It's really, really fun. And I just think Cougar Nation is such a great uh, great support to me, and I'm just so happy to be a part of it. Uh, and, it and I'm kind of gushing about it, guys, but you know what I'm talking about. I mean, because uh, you, you're beloved. I'm just kind of I'm nobody. In <laughs> oh, my God. <gosh>. <laughs> I, I go out, and people are so good to me and so kind and uh, so supportive of BYU. I just, it's just great to be a part of. Amen to all of that. We'll wrap up with this. If BYU beats Washington State tomorrow night and the Cougars are a three-point favorite against the Cougars from Pullman, then will this somehow redeem some disappointment from not making the NCAA tournament? I hate to use the word salvage, but may- maybe redeem is better. What do you think, Mark? I mean, there's different views. I mean, obviously, it's not the goal you wanted, Spencer, but uh, again, it's the goal that you have now, and people want to poo-poo the NIT all you want. And you know, it's not a big deal, but again, you're playing very good teams. And if you were in a preseason tournament with these teams and you beat these teams and won this preseason, you would be on top of the world because these are this is a great tournament. So it's a great opportunity. And I think if you can win games against these teams, that is an enormous thing to be proud of. This, this is a good tournament with really good teams. And if you perform at a high level and win, you have done something worthwhile and something uh, credit worthy. And, and so I hope, I think the guys are seeing the light. They're excited about the prospects and are playing better. And it's just get, get the more you win and then further you advance, the better it gets. So just keep winning, baby. Mark, I can't wait to perform when I'm granted a high pressure situation the next time. It's going to be great. I believe in you. Listen, Jeremy may not pass you the ball late in the game. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I know all about pressure. I got a Pinewood Derby tomorrow night right before the basketball game. It doesn't get more pressure packed than that. And you're going up against Washington State in the Derby before the <laughs> actual Cougars. <laughs> Just front load it way too go. much. Let's yeah. go. Mark, great to talk to you. We appreciate your insights into the team and the NIT. We'll see you tomorrow. I love you guys. Take it easy. All love for Mark Durant. Was it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. When you love people, you feel comfortable to tease them and give yeah. them a hard time. I realized uh, essentially this tournament's like a bunch of quad twos at home, right? They would be they would be quad ones on the road, but quad twos at home that BYU can win quad twos at home, right? And then there will be a few quad ones at home. Some quad ones in Madison Square Garden. And then there will be quad ones, uh, you know, you'd think on a neutral court. Like I said, good teams. Yeah, and and context uh, matters 100%. Like, Mark's exactly right. If these were non-conference wins, we'd be like, dude, these are good wins. Exactly. But it's because BYU didn't make the tournament. So it's like, how do we deal with this? But, yeah, this is fun. It's awesome to make a run. BYU's 40 minutes away from New York, baby. Let's go. Coming up, Puka Nakua after practice yesterday with Dave McCann. Plus a little news fresh off the social media presses. Is that a thing? One nationally ranked BYU team finds out their postseason destination and status. Don't go anywhere. This is BYU Sports Nation. Who's the Gutenberg of social media? Accidents don't just happen 9 to 5. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24-7. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always. And get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24-7. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com.
Lucky Couture Luxurious Blanket. Getting cozy with family and friends. A gift for everyone. Minky Couture, official luxury blanket of BYU Athletics. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From auto accidents to criminal defense and from bankruptcy to family law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. Turn TV time into Together Time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content all for free on the BYU TV app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Hear the real-life stories of Cougars, players, coaches, and alums by listening to the Deep Blue Podcast on the BYU Radio app and where podcasts are found with 39 shows deep. Go and check it out, man. Worth it. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. As promised, some breaking news. He is Jeremiah Spencer. And this is BYUSN. To interact with the show, uh, you can follow us on the social media platforms, which we have been scouring for this news, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. So this just in, the BYU gymnastics team will compete in the Seattle Regional of the NCAA Gymnastics Championships. Nice. Like that location, rather close compared mm -hmm. to going to, like, say, West Virginia, which they did recently. The Cougars will compete in Session 1 in Seattle against the five-seed Alabama and the 12 seed Michigan State and host Washington. This is BYU already competed against? Question mark. Correct. Sure. Correct. This is a good seeding for BYU because the Cougars are capable of putting up a better score than the 12 seed Michigan State. Remind me, is it two through? Yes. You've got to be in the top two of the four in that session. Get to session? the second day. Okay. Correct. Okay. Correct. And we learned from the ladies, multiple have been on the show this year, that they just want to get to day two. Yes. Getting to the NCAA championships, what is it, top six top. or eight or something? What is yeah, it? Yeah, six? yeah, the top six. That's another level, right? Sure. Um, but session two has Utah, Oregon State, Illinois, and Stanford or San Jose State. So Utah is getting through. You're hoping to be one of the four yeah. that get through out yeah. of those eight teams to day two. So get to day two. Yeah, that's a reasonable BYU has goal. put up scores that are capable of beating the 12-seed Michigan State. This is a good draw. Yeah. Good location. I like it. And a good draw for BYU. Mike's place. Space Needle. Let's go. Competition begins Wednesday, March 30th. Now. Hang out with Pearl Jam. Whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. Take the ferry across the uh, sound. You can see the sound. Sure. Fun fact. Yeah. Hoops is favored by three points against uh, Wazoo. Do you expect the game to be that close tomorrow? I do. I just think it's going to be an absolute, for lack of a better phrase, teeth grinder. It's going to be nerve-wracking, white-knuckle basketball viewing. Is that why Harris the Chance had his mouth guard in? Maybe he so. He already knew it was going to be Maybe so. Wow. Just a precursor. Wear your mouth guards if you're watching the basketball game. What tomorrow. if the Rock's wearing mouth guards? They're like, dude, <laughs> this is a teeth Spencer said this is a teeth grinder. It feels like that type of game. I just think yeah. it's going to be super competitive and close, and the BYU fans will be uncomfortable, and then... Somebody makes a play late in the game and gets to New York. I think it'll be close as well. I just think it'll go up to like five or six. Okay. Yeah. BYU announced all the lower bowl seats for tomorrow night's game are sold out. Yeah. The NIT nice quarterfinal work. when they host Washington State. Nice work. Jeremy, will there be over 10,000 fans in attendance tomorrow night? Yeah, absolutely. I'm thinking there's 12 to 15 tomorrow night. Yes. It's going to be a great crowd. The fans have the bought NIT. in now. Yeah. Literally, they have bought I, in. I know someone who's flying in to go to the game. That's, that's, that's great. Commitment. Yeah. That is commitment. Get to New York. Let's go, baby. 
Big Game Boomer as BYU is the 17th best team in his college football spring top 25 poll. Will the Cougars be higher or lower in the preseason AP top 25? BYU will be lower in the preseason AP top 25. In fact, don't be shocked if BYU is not ranked in the preseason AP top 25 and just a team receiving votes. If BYU is ranked in the preseason, I'd guess it's somewhere between 23 and 25. Yeah, I go 21 to 25 in that range. But yes, I, I don't think that BYU is going to get the love preseason. And that's okay. Just go and win games and you find them. I mean, the AP writers typically look at what a team did last season and if they have their quarterback coming back, which well, BYU does. And if they do, and the second most experienced in the country, why wouldn't that team? Some value. Why, why like, like, BYU probably should, if all things were equal and fair, be like 17 in the AP preseason poll. Given who, what BYU did last year and who they returned? Yeah. Sure. I just yeah. don't see it happening. I don't see it either. We're <laughs> jaded. Uh, 100%. 23 to 25 for yeah. me. Yeah. BYU baseball in the University Parkway collision tonight against Utah Valley. No in one baseball. calls it that, but us. 17 games this season. The Batcats have hit 12 home runs. Yep. They've had three multi home run games. Not bad. Over under one and a half home runs tonight against the Wolverines. Uh, here's the thing. BYU is going up in elevation, so the ball is going to carry oh, even wow. more. Remember we talked about this Up one like time? 26 feet? Yeah, something Whatever like that. Whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, no, I go over. I, I think uh, Cole Gamble and Colin Ruder and Hayden Latham and the boys are going to get it done. Two plus. This is an early week game, so there are a lot of pitchers. Randos. A lot of different players yeah. will see the field. And I don't know if that correlates to more home runs or fewer when you have, like, your established core and your typical roster. Um, but I'm going to I'm gonna say that it's going to be a little bit weird just with all the different arms and pitching changes. This game's going to last forever, probably. I'm going to go under tonight. BYU will win with a little bit of small ball. And maybe there's one home run. Maybe Jaron Hall will show up again and have the game-winning hit. That happened he like hit a home two run years against ago. against Utah Valley. Yeah. Al Michaels is leaving NBC to team up with Kirk Herbstreit to call Thursday Night Football games on Amazon. So Spencer and I would like to announce that we are leaving to go to nope. NBC for Sunday night, but we wish. <laughs> with those two joining together and Joe Buck and Troy Aikman moving to ESPN, which announcing crew do you want to see call a BYU game on TV? Not that those affect BYU games, but we're just throwing it out. I mean, the idea of Fowler and Herb Street is always nice because they're the primetime crew, right? Yes, and Herb Street will still be with the SBA. So if Fowler and Herb Street are calling a BYU game, that means BYU has done something spectacular to get into a primetime scenario. The same happened this year. No. Because the, the Notre Dame game will be on NBC because it's a home game for it. Correct. But the question is, who do you want to see call a game? And in oh, my mind, yeah, sure. with the yeah. blue goggles on, I'm thinking, well, yeah, I want Fowler and Herb Street to call a BYU game because that would mean the Cougars are doing something pretty special. Yeah, I'd also love John Madden to... Uh rise up and call one too. That'd be fun. Um, I would love Adam Amin at some point to call some games, okay. but he's in the NFL now. Yep. In the Big 12, I'm hoping that Aaron Goldsmith gets some games. He's a Fox guy. On Fox, yeah. And a Mariners broadcaster that I'm homies with. He's done a couple BYU games. Did uh, at Washington a couple years ago. Did Boise State in 2020. That one went well. Yeah, it did. The first one, not so much. The, the, the second the, one went yeah, well. Yeah, I was texting him during the game. Hey, I know Boise State has their like third or fourth string in. Who's now BYU, Kate Finnegan. But BYU had the similar situation the year before because the rhetoric on Twitter was weird. So I was trying to counter that through him sure. on the air. Underrated broadcast superstar, Sean McDonough. I love when Sean McDonough calls BYU games. I think he's rated properly. He did Monday Night Football. <sighs> he got pulled off of that. But he's... No, that's every two years they do. <laughs> Save the 70s. Well, ESPN's hoping Frank that uh, Joe and Buck and Troy Aikman last a while because they just forked out a yes. ton of money. No yes, more two-year stuff. Yes, the New Orleans Saints have announced the re-signing, not resigning, but the re-signing. Is it spelled the same way? Yes. But I believe there's a dash between RE and sign when you Thank re-sign you. somebody instead of resign. Oh. Okay. Jameis Winston now has a new two-year $28 million contract. What in the world does that mean? For BYU fans and their beloved Taysom Hill in New Orleans. Means he ain't the starter. I don't think so. I think no. they want Jameis to be the starter. And it's not Sean Payton anymore. The cool uncle's not running the show. Right. So yeah. what does that mean for Taysom Hill? New coach? He's gadget guy now, I guess. Is he gadget yeah. guy there or does he 
he lose value some now with the new staff. Or maybe there'll be another team that values him in a similar way. Okay. Yeah, he's not the starter. I agree. Yeah. This tweet was sent out uh, from Jonathan Smythe. The short leave dress shirt has no place in modern society. <laughs> Either wear a dress shirt or wear a t-shirt. What are we, all Mormons? Are we all Mormons? Uh, your thoughts on um, short sleeve dress shirts? Listen, Dwight Schrute has a huge <laughs> issue with this idea that short sleeve dress shirts are not important. Come on! Find a place for the short sleeve dress shirt. Also, yeah, they belong on missionaries, especially when you're walking up huge hills in yeah. Masan, South Korea in 98-degree yeah. weather with 90% humidity and yeah. your apartment's at the top of a hill. Every Thanks, Prez, for that location. <laughs> uh, it was cheap. Church has money. Let's go. Yeah, in Brazil, I had to have the short sleeve to survive. I have not worn one since the Mish, though. I, I wore I, one I, under a few suits. I kind of agree. Like, yeah, un under the suit. Yeah. <laughs> under a few suits. Sloppy sleeves. Yep, let's go. Exactly. That's funny. <laughs> okay, coming up, Top 5 Tuesday with the best hoops wins versus the Pac-12. And Dave McCann goes one-on-one -on -one with BYU star receiver Puka Nakua. Oh, he a baller. What are his ambitions for 2022? This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Every day, I help an animal walk again. I believe that having special needs animals has brought an extra layer of richness to the fabric of our family. Not many people take in these special needs guys, but in the end, they're the best ones. It's unbelievable. It's like his disability has disappeared. Every step just proves to me that these dogs can get through anything. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Baseball plays at Utah Valley tonight on BYU Radio 8 Eastern Time. The official pilot of BYU Sports Nation Greg Short weighs in on the short sleeves dress shirts. He says pilots also need short sleeve dress shirts. Just saying. It's true. There There's a go. huge market for that. There you go. Thank you Greg for weighing in. Airline officials unite. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. Yesterday, following the latest edition of BYU football spring practice, Dave McCann spoke with standout BYU wide receiver Puka Nakua. Guys, Blaine Tao tonight. Our new football analyst for the day is Puka Nakua. Welcome to the welcome to the show. Appreciate it. <laughs> Let's start with the defensive backs. How do they look? They've been trying to defend you the last three weeks. Uh, they look really good. They're a veteran group. We got a lot of guys coming back. I think uh, Caleb Pace is a guy I see a lot. Jacob Robinson moving back down to to corner. We had some injuries last year, so yeah. I love. Uh, he's an Orem High Tiger. You know how we do it. So oh, yeah. he's, he's representing strong. And then Malik Moore and our secondary, like there, we look like a solid group. Uh, I think being a veteran group. You have, you, they build that connection. It's the same thing that our receiver group of having guys that come back in the offense right. and the defense who know what they're doing. So it's exciting. I, I feel like I, I feel like the receivers. We all, we're always winning the battles with them, but they're competing and making plays against us, and they're making me uh, 
work on my skills because they, they we have tendencies and they have tendencies, so they're picking up on some stuff. So who's covering you the best? Uh, I think Caleb Hayes. Caleb Hayes. We we got a good matchup. That's the one I always look forward to. Uh, shoot, I forgot D'Lo. D'Lo's in there too. Uh, <laughs> but I think Jacob Robinson. Jake, we've been playing together for a couple years now, so he, he he has my number every once in a while. But I think my height advantage is what gives me a, the, the the upper hand sometimes. <laughs> You're gonna face a lot of offenses this defense. Uh, how do you feel about that group? That oh. defensive back group as a whole. Uh, they're solid. I love. I, I I put Caleb Pays and Jacob Robinson against anybody. Those guys. The 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 technique that they work and just the confidence that they bring. Uh, that that defensive back mindset that they have. Of, uh, there you have to be a dog. Like that's the only mindset I can think of to put the word on that entire group is you got to be a dog. They're they're we we run everything to make them look bad and they still look good. So if you're <laughs> doing that, are you doing something right? Coming into camp, you and I had a chance to visit and you talked about one. Last year, you were out with a broken bone in your foot, and it was about this time that you announced you were coming to BYU. So here's your first spring practice, and you talked about rhythm reps and how, they, how important they would be for you. What are they, and how is it going? Uh, it's been good. It's been nice to get out here and just make sure that I, Jaron feels comfortable throwing the ball anytime I get out there. And the, the offense of running certain routes, we have certain routes that are off steps, uh, certain looks. Uh, certain looks of the defense has given us that I know where I might be getting the ball in that look. So making sure that I'm in the right spot at the right time, but seeing the right coverages. So it's all just making sure that my job is lining up with what Jaron's doing in the backfield. So it's been super fun to get those things done. Does he have an idea now after a few weeks that by the time he takes three steps back, he knows how far downfield you are if you guys are throwing the deep ball? I think so, especially with me, him and Gunner. I mean, that's that's what our offense is. We, we run a lot of deep shots, and he trusts us, and that's the thing. I know there's a point where I'm not even looking until uh, there's, the ball's getting ready to come into my hands because I know he, where he's going to put the ball, and he knows where I'm going to be at. So that's got to be the best feeling because it makes Caleb and Jacob, them, like, if I'm never looking for the ball, they have no idea what is coming. And as soon as I put my hands up, it's right there for me. So it's like, it's like taking candy from a baby. <laughs> Camp wraps up a week from Thursday, and then what happens between now and South Florida? Um, just hanging out with the homies. <laughs> like these, <laughs> these are all my brothers out here in the locker room, so we just get to hang out, play more football together. Like It's just uh, summertime vibes. Come out, enjoy the sun. We play some spike ball, but it's just building the camaraderie of outside football. Obviously, we get our football reps in the morning and stuff like that, but just to hang out and enjoy the time that we get off of football, but still making sure that the football grind we never lose. All right, Puka Nakua, that's our report from camp. I'm Dave McCann. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Dave and Puka. He is a walking bundle of energy and joy. More Puka, man. Uh, I think he's uh, the best receiver on the team. I think Gunnar Romney's right there as well. Second with 43 catches, led the team with 805 and six touchdowns. He could have a 1,000-yard year. In fact, I, he's totally capable of that. I, I really think that he could have that this next year. He's I, fantastic. NFL prospect. He yeah. is so good. I'm purposely, in my mind, just – placing expectations super low for this team so that they will crush them and be amazing. You're always going to go four and eight next year. You heard it here. First. No, no, they're going to be awesome. Coming up top five Tuesday features the top wins against Pac-12 teams. This season. And a rising shout out to the gift that just frankly keeps on giving for BYU athletics. This is BYU sports nation. And BYU made such a difference in our lives. I think really helped mold us as to as to who we are. And so when we had that opportunity and, and came back to Boise and found out there was an active chapter, we thought, okay, that's something that I can really get behind and get involved in. We want to promote the BYU experience all over the, the, the region. We want people who leave BYU to still stay connected. where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. The race is on. Go! Four teams powered by faith and driven to find family. With only their teammate, paper maps, and inspiration to guide them. Where are you? The contestants race for the ultimate prize. I am one step closer to knowing who my father is. The chance to meet their blood relatives and discover more about who they are. Relative Race, driving families together. 
Watch Season 9 on BYU TV or on the free app. There's nothing quite like doing a live sketch. Having the audience like nearby is really, really neat to just be able to connect with them and hopefully make their day better. When you are doing a sketch and you hear your first laugh, it's just like, here we go, let's go for it. I mean, one of the most rewarding things is having people saying like, I, I struggle with this or this and you guys are able to make me laugh at it and realize like I'm not the only person going through those things. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Let's go top five Tuesday. Tomorrow night, BYU men's basketball will look to make it 6-0 along with the women's team against the Pac-12 on both sides of the hoops conversation. So right now we rank BYU's five wins in men's and women's hoops this year against the Conference of Champions. Number five, women's basketball beats Arizona State 55-44. Lower scoring with 25 points from Paisley Harding. Double-double from Lauren Gustin, 10.16 rebounds as BYU took down the Sun Devils. Number four, in what was an undefeated matchup at the time, the men handling rival Utah in the Huntsman Center in Salt Lake City, 75-64, part of No Lost November. T. John Lucas had maybe his best game as a Cougar, 18 points on 8 of 10 shooting. Alex Barcelo added 17. Gavin Baxter, remember him? He had 14. Oh, it was a great month. Number three, similar situation to what we'll see tomorrow night. Women's team beat Washington State 71-57. Cougars from the Plus were an eight seed in the NCAA tournament, by the way. Shot three of 29 from two. I called this one. It was super weird. I've never seen that before. Hopefully the men can do the same and take down Washington State. Number two, more from the ladies as they took care of their side in the rivalry, beating Utah 85-80 at the Huntsman Center. Paisley Harding had a career-high 33 hitting four threes, 14 of 20 shooting from the field. Shady Gonzalez added 22. Remember, this is a Utah team that went to the NCAA tournament as well and won a game as a seven seed. Number one, BYU men's basketball blast. Number 12, Oregon in Portland, 81-49. The Cougars became the first unranked team to beat a top 15 by 30 plus away from home since 93. Also, BYU's largest margin of victory against a ranked team ever. AB had 25, Cougars jumped up to 12 after this win in the uh, AP poll eventually. Both teams made it to the NIT. Oh, and only one of them is still playing in the NIT. Our question of the day, do you believe the NIT experience will have any impact on next season for BYU basketball? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from at Tricky Tanner. He says, yes, I believe it will. The younger guys getting valuable postseason experience, plus they've experienced the grind of trying to get into the NCAA tournament. I believe that both of these things will help the younger guys next year. Got to add some vets, and then you got a shot. Let's I go. like that optimism, Tricky Tanner. Today's Rise and Shout Outs presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. To the transfer portal. BYU uh, got a commitment from someone. We're hopefully getting an announcement here soon. Adding to the second. Yeah. That's the gift that keeps on giving, and I love it. Our thanks to today's guests, Mark Durant and Puka Nakua. Started at this pit, we ran out of time. For Jeremiah and Spencer, shout out to Stephen DeSantis. Stay tuned for BYU TV and BYU Radio for today's BYU devotional featuring Elder D. Todd Christofferson, a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints.